On today's show, the Jeep Cherokee shrugs off the big hack attack, Nissan offers a bigger battery in the Leaf, and how the Detroit 3 could really boost their stock prices. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 10th of 2015. As we reported earlier this week, sales of electrified vehicles are falling fast. Even the King of the Hill Prius has seen its sales slip by more than 16% this year in the American market. But with the all-new Prius coming to market, Toyota still has a positive outlook. The automaker's VP of Marketing, Jack Hollis, attributes the drop in sales to a vehicle that's gone mostly unchanged for six years. He also cites low prices at the pump. Even so, the fact that the new Prius is more efficient, has more technology, and bold new styling has Hollis encouraged that things will turn around. Toyota will also pursue new marketing avenues. Since we saw the slogan, Beyond Possible, plastered everywhere at the unveiling of the new hybrid, it's pretty safe to say that slogan will be part of the campaign. Range is still a concern for consumers thinking about buying an electric vehicle, but Nissan is looking to squash some of those worries as it introduces the 2016 LEAF. A new, slightly larger battery pack is available as an option for 2016 on the base S model, but it's standard on the SV and SL models. The upcharge for those models is $5,000 and $7,800 respectively. The new pack increases the estimated range from 84 miles all the way on up to 107 miles. Coming up next, how big rigs can get better fuel economy by lifting up an axle. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, Leading the automotive world in intelligent, connected vehicles, we run on brain power. Commercial vehicles like passenger cars face stricter fuel economy regulations in the coming years. That's why Volvo Trucks just introduced a new feature called Tandem Axle Lift, which makes it possible to disengage and raise the second driven axle. As you can see in the video, the driver would use the feature after dropping off a load and he can even raise it while driving. Since the second driven axle is not needed with an empty load, fuel economy is improved by up to 4% thanks to reduced rolling resistance. And not only does it improve MPGs, the feature makes it easier to maneuver the truck and it improves tire wear. And if you want to learn more about how commercial vehicles will be impacted by upcoming regulations, check out our most recent Auto Line This Week which dives into that topic. And you can watch that show right now at Autoline.tv or on our YouTube channel. Fuel cell vehicles have the potential to dramatically reduce our dependence on fossil fuel. But one of the major hurdles they face is the availability of hydrogen to fuel those cars. That's why Toyota, which is heavily invested in fuel cells, is joining a public-private partnership in Japan to test a carbon-neutral renewable hydrogen supply chain. The goals of the project include using wind power to turn water into hydrogen, creating a system to optimize storage and transportation of hydrogen, and to test hydrogen produced in fuel cell forklifts. The project begins next April and will run for four years. Hey, don't forget to tune into AutoLine After Hours later today. We'll be arguing about the most important new cars and technologies That'll be coming out of the Frankfurt Auto Show next week. We'll have Stephanie Brindley from IHS Automotive and Todd Lassa from Automobile Magazine in on all that. So join me and Gary Vasilash for some of the best insider views of what makes this auto industry tick. It starts later today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at www.autoline.tv. Coming up next, how did that hack attack affect sales of the Jeep Cherokee?
There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. When two hackers took control of a Jeep Cherokee and ran it off the road, it made headlines around the world. That set off the nattering nabobs of negativism in the blogosphere who gleefully predicted this would cripple sales of the Cherokee. Well, it didn't happen. Sales were up nearly 7% year over year and up more than 12% month over month. Even though hacking scares people, I guess it doesn't scare them away enough from wanting a new set of wheels. And yet, FCA still has recall problems. This morning it announced it's issuing three separate recalls involving the Ram pickup. Over 1.3 million are being recalled because the steering wheel harness may wear out and short circuit, causing the driver's side airbag to deploy. Another 190,000 have poor bracket welds on steering components and 188,000 are being recalled to make them compliant with a regulation that reduces the risk of a rear seat occupant getting ejected in a rollover. You know, one of the reasons why the stock prices for GM, Ford, and FCA lag behind others is their unfunded pension liabilities, mainly for their UAW workers. GM's pension plan is underfunded by $11 billion, Ford's by $9 billion, and FCA USA by more than $5 billion. Wall Street doesn't like to see big piles of future bills stacked up on a company's balance sheets. And that's one reason why their stocks underperform the market. But Merrill Lynch thinks that a pension deal could be worked out in the next couple of years. It says that if the automakers and the UAW have a congenial outcome from their current labor negotiations, then rising interest rates and a significant improvement in the automakers' balance sheets could set the stage for a pension deal. And that would save each company about a billion dollars a year and take a big monkey off their backs. And all that would really help their stock price. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.